Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So this is part six of our .NET full stack series. And in today's video, we are going to learn about what is ORM, okay? And not just that, we will also see one of the most popular ORM, which we will be using in our project that is Entity Framework Core. So this video is completely dedicated for us to understand what is ORM. And we will also see how we can configure Entity Framework in our .NET project. So before starting the video, right, I will highly recommend you guys to go ahead and watch the first to fifth part so that this video can really make sense to you all right so let me ask you this question like if you are a dotnet developer right so what kind of orm have you heard before okay so if i ask this question i know most of you people say that uh, i have used entity framework i have used dapper or we are still using the ADO.NET way of communicating with your database. So if you're working with the databases in .NET application, then the chances are very high that you have encountered with this term before. Okay. So we will explore like what ORMs are and why they are useful. All right. And then we focus especially on the entity framework core, which is one of the most popular ORM tools for the .NET developers. So ORM is nothing, but it's just a programming technique. Okay. Which allows you to interact with the relationship database okay and these interactions are happening by using object oriented programming concept so instead of writing sql directly you will be working with the objects or classes so that represents the database table and their relationships if you remember in the last video right we have created the entities and what are those entities those are nothing but all our classes okay and if you have class which means you can create objects of those class right so those were nothing but your objects so on the left hand side what you see over here right? this is your object okay and this is your database and this is what this orm comes in picture in the middle right which helps you to map your object inside the database okay which means whatever object we have created what like whatever entities what we have created in our project that will get mapped inside this particular database okay so this guy is mediator between your object this and this is mediator between over here so this is how the flow is okay so that so if you want to send a data you can send it via orm if you want to fetch the data you can fetch it via orm and what we will help and what is the main guy who will help us to do that and that is entity framework code Okay, so now let's first discuss about what kind of problem this ORM solves. Okay, so traditionally, like when, when we were working with the databases in application, right? So developer have to write a lot of boilerplate code just to map their data. Okay, so if they want to map the data from your particular code to the database, they have to write a lot of SQL queries and whatnot. Okay, so you have to maintain those particular queries and then you have to send data from your backend to your database and, and whatnot. Okay, so there are different different approach what people used to use. Okay, so this process was quite tedious. Okay, and there are high chances that there can be some errors. So what it come in picture the ORM came in picture. Okay, so now let's talk about what is that ORM I'm talking about. So we will be using the entity framework core and EF core is nothing but an open source ORM framework, which is given to us by Microsoft itself. So anyway, .NET is a Microsoft product and they are the one who are the creator of this entity framework as well. So now that's why it quite gels up perfectly to use that particular ORM tool. So EF core nothing but provides us a set of APIs. Okay. And tools that simplifies the process of working with database and that we will see whenever we will create all those tables and everything, then everything will make sense to you guys. So that EF core, right? What it helps, it helps you to data model your code first and database first approach. So there are two different approaches, which means that right, you will be writing code and that code will get converted into SQL queries. Okay. So I think this is the most famous approach that what we will be also using. So I'm not going to go with the database first approach. If you still want to learn about that database first approach, you can just search for it over here. Database first approach. Okay. You can find it like it, it is there already on the internet, but to be honest, if you are using .NET 8 and now you are in 2024, I will highly recommend you guys to go ahead with the code first approach because this is what it has been used everywhere. What I have, let's talk about the benefits of the entity framework. Okay. So what are the benefits? So let me talk about each of them in detail. So EF core helps us in productivity, like how it is helping in productivity. Let's discuss that. So what it does, right? It helps you in abstracting away your low level database interaction. Like you don't have to write the SQL queries. You don't have to focus on writing SQL queries. You just have to write your business logic and it will take care of it by its own. 
okay so which means now your productivity increased because you have to write less code or less queries and this will do the job while talking about the testability like since your data access is separated from business logic right so it becomes quite easier for you to write unit test and mock the database interactions the good thing about the ef core is that it supports link you so that you can make use of those joins those where clause and whatnot so you can use all of them in your project okay so this will help you to do things quite faster now without even writing any sql queries and trust me guys link you is quite good because it allows you to write expensive and type safe queries against your data models okay so this link you is one of the best feature what i would say of this ef core which we are getting benefit of all right now the fourth thing is the migrations itself uh, okay i'll talk about this when i will show you the migration commands like what happens like once you create your model once your configurations are ready and then you will see that you will be creating a migration okay a migration command and that will create a migration folder where you can actually review right what kind of sql queries that it gonna write inside the database so all those things we will see in the live demo okay when i will configure the entity framework Okay, so that is one of the feature and the last feature of what I will say is cross platform. Like when I say EF core, right? It is not just limited to Microsoft SQL server. You can use MySQL, you can use PostgreSQL, you can use Oracle. So everything is supported. So that's why I loved about this EF core that this guy is cross platform. Like sometimes, uh, some people go with the PostgreSQL because it's open source and it's quite easy to configure and whatnot. So, so it is not just dependent on a single SQL, SQL thing, right? You have the cross platform feature getting out of the box. Okay. So these were the benefits of entity framework. Like if anyone asks you an interview, right? So now you have your answer, right? Why entity framework is better. Okay. You have all the benefits in front of you. And also you can explain them in the interview, right? What is this ORM? Like these objects are getting mapped to the database. And you already saw in the previous video, like when we have created all the entities. So these entities are nothing but your objects. Okay. And these objects are going to be mapped inside your database. Okay. Don't worry guys. Now I will try to demonstrate about how you can configure entity framework in your .NET project. So we are done with the theory part. Now let's go ahead and try to install entity framework. So now you will have a question, Shashi, where do we install the entity framework? Like we have four projects, right? So the right direct, like the right folder will be the infrastructure one, the infrastructure layer. If you remember, right, when we were discussing about the domain driven design, uh, not the domain driven, but the clean architecture, right? So the domain was in the center and just below it, there was an infrastructure and infrastructure was responsible for doing all your DB calls, like all everything related to the database right it will be part of your infrastructure and so this is what we are going to do here now like okay so this infrastructure we are going to target for the database dependencies okay now let's go here and open up this inside your terminal okay to open up this thread you have two ways right you can just click right click here and you can say open in integrated terminal okay the moment you do that right can you see you are inside this in infrastructure folder okay now to install the package right if you are using visual studio then you have to follow the nuget way of downloading like you will have a nuget package manager okay so you can go from there i don't know how i can show that option because i am not using visual studio but you can just do a google and you will get your answers okay but uh, if you want to do with cli way you can still do that you could just have to right click on the project and open it inside the terminal Okay. And uh, if I'm not wrong, right for visual studio, there is something called as package manager console. So I can help you with those commands, which you need to uh, install for this particular packages. So now let me just go back here and uh, open up this because I have list of all the packages, which we want to install. Okay. So the first package, what we need, right? So if you're using .NET CLI, which I will be using, then you have to use this command .NET add package and the package name So the first package is Microsoft dot entity framework core. So you can also search for that package. Okay. So, okay, let me just do a quick demo. If you're using rider, right? So suppose rider does something similar, what you have for visual studio. Okay. So they have the NuGet package manager. Okay. So you can just click over here, right? And you can search for all the packages like entity framework. So you can search for EF core and see, can you able to see you are able to get this option and you can click on install. Okay. But uh, that was with Rider and uh, Visual Studio. But now if you are using like you're following me and using Visual Studio code, then you have to run this particular command dot net add and then package name. So let me go ahead and run all the necessary package. Let me install all of them. 
so first thing let me install this okay so this will be added and if you want to check that this is successfully installed or not so what you can do you can open up your infrastructure project open the dependencies and in the package can you see it has been installed 8.0.5 okay as we are using dotnet 8 so everything we have to make sure that it is of version dotnet 8 let me install the other three packages as well all right so now you can see right i have all the four packages installed so i have ef core i have ef core dot design and let me tell you guys i will be using ms sql right so i have this sql server if you want to use postgre then you can search on google for what is the package for postgre so you will get npsql dot postgre or something like that you can just search for it and you will get your answers and the last one is the ef core dot tools okay so this is how okay so once you have all this right so now you can okay so now i can say the ef core is installed and now you can start writing all your configurations and you're ready to add your migrations as well if you guys need all this command right i will mention them in the description or you, i can share this eraser link with you guys so that you can go ahead and follow all the steps from you like what all packages you guys need okay so this step is very important okay if you miss this step then you might not be able to add the migration commands okay so now once that is done right so our next step is to write the configurations so now when you see a configuration means what shashi like nothing but whatever the configuration means like for example your user role how it should be in the database something like that for example if i open up your entity let me open up the entity for user okay so for user right i want to make this id as primary key this is a username what is the length of this username uh, what is the maximum length for email what is the maximum length for password and whatnot so all those things you can configure it inside this configuration folder okay but before that right if you remember if you have a entity framework installed then you will have a very important class and the class name is context okay so if you remember in this infrastructure we have this context folder as well okay i hope i think i have not created that okay yeah, it's inside the persistent so inside this you have this context folder and you will have to create a class called as app db context okay so let's go ahead and create your application db context so click on this plus and then you have to create a class and the class name i want to give it as because we are creating a blog application right so my app name is blog so i'll say blog and this is a database context so go db context okay so this class is ready all right and now this class will be inheriting from db context okay and from where this db context came right this db context is nothing but coming from your entity framework okay so that's what i was telling you right you need to have entity framework installed so that you can use the db context so this is incorrect so this should be db let me show you here can you see this is coming from microsoft.entity framework okay so if you hit enter on the top you can see the usings okay the namespace all right so now once you have this right so there is a way how you can uh like you can configure this db context so you have to create your constructor and then you have to pass in the option so you have db context options and inside that you have to pass the blog db context okay which you have created and this option you have to pass it to the base because you are inheriting this class right and this class in this class you have this option called as db context option so that's how you have to pass this to this base okay and now once that is done right so now you can start creating your db sets okay now if you're using dotnet 8 right so with c sharp with dotnet 8 i think you are getting c sharp 12 and in c sharp 12 you have a feature where you can create primary constructors okay so if currently this constructor what i have created right so now this is not a primary so if you want to make this a primary then what you can do you can copy this everything from here and you can directly in it, like tell it directly to this db context okay and now you have to pass the option so that option you can pass it directly to the db context here okay so this is what you got options after dotnet uh, 8 and maybe it is feature of c sharp 12 okay so we can pass the options directly over here okay as an option and i don't need this particular block db context so i can remove this okay okay this is an additional one so let me remove that all right so now this is the primary constructor what i was talking about so you can directly inject it in the class okay and this is called your primary constructor okay now we have to create all the db sets so how do we create the db sets you have to say prop okay this is of type db sets so what are the db sets these db sets are nothing but which are going to mapped as i told you right you have a object created so the object was nothing but your entity okay the object name is user okay user and then you'll give the name as users 
okay now this is not working because you have to add the reference okay if you remember right if you remember if i go here let me go back and let me show you the diagram okay if you see the arrow right so this infrastructure infrastructure will have reference of this particular uh, application and this particular domain so this is the inwards okay so this guy goes inwards which means that this guy should have reference to application and domain so this is what i'm going to do now so you have to have the reference created how do we refer the project so what you will do you will right click on the project you will get an option for add project reference and the moment you click right which project you want to refer so i want to refer the domain okay so let's do domain at the moment but i think you will require both domain and application so let me also add the application so let me also select the application okay so now if you see in the dependencies project so now this infrastructure is have a reference of application and domain project okay and now if i type here again user then i should be able to get it okay let me see why is it not getting let me click here and do the quick fix and you can see right now i'm using in from the domain so now it is referring from the domain layer okay so now this is what i have the first db set then i will have for role then i will have for user roles then the blogs and then i will have the comments okay so these db sets are nothing but these are going to become my table inside my database so that's what i was talking about here in the diagram when i was explaining you about the orm okay so if you remember whatever the classes we have created just below here so this is nothing but my objects okay all the db sets all right so now this is how the db sets look like now i have to create the configuration for all my entities okay so let me just show you how it will look like okay so if you see here right uh, if i show you all the entities so this is how it will look like so now we have this protected override on model creating so this is override method because uh, you, you know right the parallel relationship so if you know this is my abstract so abstract method has to be overridden so this is part this on model creating is part of this db context okay so now what this method allow us to do right we can configure our models here so now we make use of this model builder and this model builder says that model builder dot entity okay so which entity you want to configure the user role yes so in the user role you have to specify that this user role has two keys which is user id and role id okay if you remember our db diagram right so we have to follow our db diagram to get this done so if i show you the db diagram over here so now for the user roles you remember this user id and role id was a key so this is what i am trying to specify it from this particular configuration okay in the same way right now i have a user role so for this user role the key is done and now i am saying that this user role has one user with many roles okay and this guy has a foreign key which is user id so in this way right this makes a one to relationship from a user table to user role table so this is what i am talking about let's go on the entity again and say that okay this will have one user with star means many many user roles okay so that's what it is there okay that's what we add our configuration same thing we have to do for the roles as well which says that hey man for this entity user role i have one role with many user roles where my foreign key is role id okay and same thing for the blocks for blocks we have to specify that this has one user with many blocks and has a foreign key user id comments and same for this particular comments where i have for comment related with user and comments related with blog okay if you remember right so as i told you right i will not be writing my configuration inside this because this is not just limited to adding the relationship i also have to specify all my entities like for example right in whenever you create a column in database you specify okay what is the type of this column okay what are the characters it will takes is it var char 50 is it n var char and what not okay so all those can be created inside a separate folder and that's what i always follow to do so let me remove all of this which is not required but i'll still keep this method because in this method i will be writing something okay now let's go back here in the infrastructure and let me close the dependencies and in this persistence i have this configuration okay so what i will do right i will write configuration for my each entities so my first configuration is nothing but my user configuration so let's click here create a class class name is user configuration okay so the class is created and now if you have to create your own configuration you have to inherit it from i entity type configuration okay so you have to specify i entity type configuration and you have to give the name of your entity which is user 
okay user now once this is done right then this guy will again this is an interface so it's a contract so it will allow you to implement the method so let's implement the interface here which is this configure and now inside this right you can you get access to the builder again and now this builder will help you to configure whatever you want so for example right i want to specify the table name so i'll say builder dot to table okay so for this user entity table i want to give the table name as users okay so that also you can do here if you want to specify the schema you can also do that from this configuration that's why i love to create my own configuration in separate file so let's go ahead and create the second thing which is my that i have to specify that what is my primary key so i will say that this table which is this builder dot has key and the key you can specify from here can you see you can access everything of the user class. So ID is my primary key. Okay. And then you have to specify for the username. So I'll say builder dot, you have to specify the property now. So I have a property and you can say the property is nothing but, okay. You can say X dot your username. So username is your property and you have to make sure that this is required and this has a maximum length of 50 okay you can also specify okay what is the type of this column so you can say dot has column types can you see you have a has column type and inside this column type you can actually mention that this is a where care 50 okay so the same way you do it in when you create the tables right so now you are doing it via coding let me also do it for the other properties as well and then come back. Okay, so this is how it looks like for my password where I'm specifying that this is a required field and has a maximum length of 250. The column type is where 250 and whatnot. And same thing I did it for my email as well that this is a required with the maximum length, the column type. And the one thing to note here that right, I have put a annotation here with a regular expression that okay, so that it will check that if this is a valid email ID or not. Okay, and also I have specified my relationship as well like this, my user will has a many relationship with user roles with one user and where I have a foreign key. Okay, so you can pause this video and you can also try to create the same configuration for yourself for this particular user. Okay, so that's how this user configuration look like. Now let me also create it for the others as well and let me show it to you how those looks like. All right, so all the configuration you can see now is been created. So let me show you one by one what are those and let me also explain you about which is very important to take a note. Okay, so I did something similar what I did for user, right? So I have this for this block configuration, I have just mapped it to table, which is the blog, I have mapped the, the primary key, which is has key. And then you can see all the title content is required. And this is how you map the dates. Okay, so for for us, right, it is a date time, right? So that's what you do. So you say that this is required field and has default value by date time dot now. Okay, so whenever there is a new entry happens in the blog, so this will take the current date time for it okay one thing to note over here in this relationship remember that we have a relationship of user with blog so what we say right builder dot has one user so we have one user in the blog with many like a user a single user can have many blocks so that's what you have mentioned here but now you're saying that on delete no action so whenever suppose for example there is a delete right delete of the user like a user has been removed and whatnot so what will happen right you will you won't want to delete the blog right so that's what you are saying like on delete behavior you say that no action okay something like that so suppose if the blog is deleted or user is deleted you don't want to delete the the record from the database so you have to mention it here that okay delete behavior should be no action no action should happen okay so this one is very important so please take a note okay so i hope you can take you can pause this video and you can just take you can write it down as well uh, but if you want this code right from me like i know because i have did here a lot of things here so if you want the code then what you can do right you can just go on buy me i will provide this link to you guys and you can just go here buy me coffee and you can search for my username that's shashikumar y and then you can get the complete source code from there Okay, so I will provide the link of that as well to you guys. So this is nothing but Shashikumar slash Y. So you can see and you can become the member as well if you want. So I just kept it quite minimal. If you become my member, right, if you go in the shop, so you can see this project is only for $8 for the members. 
okay so if you are not a member but you can still want to buy as uh, just as one time then you can also do that and once you click on this you can get the project zip file and then you can configure it if you are facing any issue to configure it you can let me know i will be definitely there to help you to configure the project okay all right so now that's all about it but let me if you want to follow the video then i'll just show you how these things look like and this is what the block configuration is this is the comment configuration again i specified the roles here with the delete behavior as no action this is my role table where i'm specifying that okay so this is how the role should be like two table it is roles okay uh, the table name should be roles or you can say role not roles okay this is okay it should be a singular and then it has a primary key it has a property called as name which is of length 50 and then this has a relationship the one thing to note here that whenever i am seeding the data right whenever the migration will happen so my table will by default have two records which is admin and user okay if you want you can add your own additional one so let me try to add one more role over here and this role name i would like to add as um super admin okay let me just reformat this somehow my this code identity is not working so super admin okay uh, all i need to change the ids of here which should be unique right so one two and three so whenever the migration will happen right you will see this record by default in your role table okay and talking about the user configuration you already saw and the last one is user role configuration and this is how it looks like you just specify your mapping of the roles remember like now you can say that shashi the configuration is created but somehow you have to use it inside this on model creating okay so how you can do that so let me show you that now okay to use it in your on model creating what you will do right you will have to say that model builder dot apply configuration okay so you have to say apply configuration from the assembly okay from this particular assembly you have to specify and then you just have to say that type of block context dot assembly so we are making use of this particular assembly to configure all my entities so now this will check for okay in this particular assembly you will see this particular configuration and it will apply them over here okay so that now this block configurations and all this entity configuration are separated from here or else if i add all of those here right so this file will become about like 2000 lines like imagine if you have more columns then how will you add your configuration so better we can separate them into their separate file okay so in this way right the first two steps are done now we have your db context class and then we have our configuration okay so that's it from this today's video where we saw that how we can create the db context class and how we can separate the configurations okay in the next video i will show you about how you can start the connection between your database and your model okay so now we will also touch this particular file app setting you remember right app setting.json where we will store our connection string and we will see how can you communicate how you can connect your database with your backend okay so that video uh, that thing i will be covered in the next video but if you have any doubt related to this topic what we have learned today where we have covered a lot of things you already know that we have seen what are orms what is entity framework what are the benefits of entity framework and then we saw that right, how we have installed the packages inside your infrastructure project then we saw how we have created the db context file and then also we saw what are the configuration and how we have created them and we have applied them inside this db context okay already i think this video is more than 30 40 minutes so i don't want to extend it more so for the connection part we will be uh, we will be doing that in the next video because that is very important once the connection is established then only we can start creating the apis the services and repositories and whatnot okay so i hope this video was quite helpful for you guys and you are able to get the idea about the ef core things and whatnot so that's all for today guys so if you know like we are what we are going to do in the next video so i know you are already excited to learn those advanced topics and best practices okay so until then happy coding and keep learning guys